Cyber Toys option. It's coming to your computer soon. Isn't that great, Brayden? <laughs> it, it reminds me when kids were kids and we had toys made out of metal with sharp objects on them. I love you guys. <laughs> That's Super for cool. sure. Um, <laughs> but hello and welcome. It is Wednesday, October 1st. And as Ray said, we are live um, counting down the days. We have two days left until our Cyber Toy auction leaves are falling, toys and banks are calling. So we're at our headquarters in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the auction features over 550 lots. It begins this Saturday, October 5th at 10 a.m. Eastern. There are a wide variety of items available for you on that auction. We have still a mechanical banks. We have a great selection of some Kaiju space robots, uh, as you can see, and uh, wind up toys. We have some Shirley Temple dolls. We have a nice Betty Boop collection, which we do. Um, has some early tin toys, penny toys, and and more. So a little bit for everyone, and we love the Cyber Toy auctions. They're fun. I know we haven't done a Cyber Broadcast in a little bit. It's been so. a while. I like them. Nice so. and laid back and relaxed. <laughs> and as always, we're still accepting bids on live auctioneers and via email and phone. So all of our contact information is on the page, and we're going to start with. Um, our Kaju. space monsters here that we just showed you. As you can see, they are battery operated. So both of them in these two compartments uh, take two double D batteries. And um, you know, it is rare uh, to not really see any corrosion or rust in there. So yeah, they really have it been operated. And I think we have the box for uh, yours and uh, the box top for Godzilla here. We do. So this is Baragon. Baragon and Godzilla. You press the blue button, and they come to life. And they also walk, too. Yeah, they walk, and actually Godzilla, when we first fired him up, he does give off a little puff of smoke. So he I mean, does. I meant to smoke a little bit, just <laughs> as he would send his rays to kill Baragon. He does. So, and Baragon, for those of you that don't know, first appeared in Frankenstein Conquers the World in 1965. I did not know that. Um, and uh, they were, they were made, both made by Bullmark, um, which was founded in 1969. And most, if not all, um, are most. denoted by this Bullmark stamp on their foot. Um, so you won't always see it, like see, I said. See, Godzilla does not have the stamp. But um, it is a good indicator if they were manufactured by Bullmark or not. And we do have the original box for Baragon, and we also have the box lid for Godzilla. But these were made for the Japanese market, and just a neat box. And we also noticed that there were one, two, three, four, five different versions of these. I'm sure all these characters have official names. Um, might have to whip out our Google Translate to try to figure that out, but <laughs> there they are. So there they are, and they're they're big size, obviously. As yeah, you can see them. very yeah. large. But yeah. aren't those toys terrific? I mean, these are from the 1970s. But you know, the real interesting thing about this breed is how the toy market, like the fashion market, like a lot of markets, they just recycle. So that brings us to one of our next lots. This is the Ives Walking Santa Claus. Yes. Does essentially the same thing that little Godzilla does. So you wind it up, not battery operated, and then he walks along and sort of will move in the same type of motion. And he seems like he doesn't want to work right now, but he does work. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's being stubborn. He's being stubborn right there. There we go. So he has that same motion, which and is awesome. almost the same. Sound, same sound too. He does. So again, this is from 1870s, made by Ives and Blakesley. They made a whole series, much like Bullmark did. So Bullmark made a series of five. I believe there are 13 different walking figures that Ives made. So we have the Santa Claus and we have General Butler, one of the famous generals from the Civil War, uh, right after the Civil War, that um, in, in this auction. And he has this little pack. Yeah, so this one there. has the pack with the original uh, toys and dolls in there, really in beautiful condition. Difficult toy to come by. Um, so I just find it interesting how sort of, you know, every new idea is an old idea. I know, yeah, they're great. So the first two were lots 1044 and 1045, if you're looking for them in the catalog. And Santa or Father Christmas is lot 1007. Very 
Very good. Next, we are also, we have another Santa. Yes, yeah, so if the you sale. don't like playing with your Santas, you can eat them. <laughs> we felt this was good. So um, that's another thing that's really great about Cybertoy Auctions. We have uh, a variety of some different things that we don't usually carry. So we have some chocolate molds for you. As you can see, this one is Santa. And these pieces actually would come off and you would fill him inside with chocolate. And depending on if you would want your chocolate to be hollow or not, it would depend on if you would let it cool and dump the chocolate out or not. Leave it in a shell. And here we have some bunny rabbits. So come Easter, and this is a folding mold here. So this makes your seated rabbit four inch high. I love that uh, one. Again, you just sort of, would, there's springs on the side that would contain it. You fill it with chocolate, let it cool a bit, open it up and you got your little bunny rabbits. We've got a little <laughs> chick. And we also have, this one's big and heavy too, but these ones would be more of the half mold. So you would just pour it in there and then you have all these little bunny rabbits. Wow. And we were going to be ambitious. We were going to make some chocolate bunny rabbits for y'all. But we kind of got a little lazy and Brie just got us some pumpkin pops. Well, and I decided <laughs> that it's very difficult to find Santa Claus and bunny rabbits on October 1st. Yeah, that so is. We're going to have a bite of a pumpkin it? pop today. Enjoy our chocolate. Cheers. <laughs> That's from Saris, one of our famous... Pittsburgh uh, chocolate. Mm -hmm. Nothing better. Super good. That is really good. I could eat that whole thing. Okay, so the chocolate molds are lot 1033. Next we have, we're gonna go back to the bull mark. We've got lots 1035 and um, 1036. These are both motorcycles. Um, they're friction motorcycles. So when you push them along the table, you get that fun sound. Like you can see this one sort of sparks in there. I loved these toys when I was a kid. I'd see how fast yeah, I, I could get them going. One. I'd be pushing and pushing. Yeah, very, very neat. And that one is has a couple pieces. Yeah, this is called the Blazer. And just a quick note, how we know that, because these are all for the Japanese market, so that's what's there. But there's a great app called Google Translate, Japanese to English, you put it right on there, it says Blazer. <laughs> and that works well for the boxes too. Yes. So the box, again, for the Japanese market. So uh, just a little trick if you don't know what it says, Google Translate. And the Blazer actually has the original helmet. Which is and awesome. I don't want to, yeah, because if you put it on and it sort of stretches or you can rip it, but that's the original helmet. And it even comes with the original rocket. So the rocket, the you load in the top, missile, and there's a little spring load on the back. And that's how he would shoot missiles out of the top of his head. It's really cool. So it's rare for him to have his helmet, the missiles, and there's original box inserts as well for him. And the other one is uh, Garibara, as you can see his name's on the side there. Also really neat, he is, um, his legs, he's not a separate piece obviously, so his torso is just mounted to the motorcycle, but he just made a great mold too. Yep. And he has his original box as well, and they're, they're just both Very really nice, neat, and yeah, we don't get these type toys. of toys. Uh, you know, again, if you're, Child of the 70s, you'll remember playing with these, so really nice things. He's a cool one. Oh, another one here. We've got some mechanical skip rope animals. Wind it up. These, these ones work really well too, that's why I wanted to show them to you. But see, we've got this little squirrel perched over here. Yeah, that adorable. We have the bear in her little felt skirt, um, and the dog there in his red overalls. The original box. Yeah, these are from the 1980s. Um, beautiful condition. They're really sweet little toy. It yeah, is. Very affordable. And again, if you're a child of the 80s now, you might remember playing with this and maybe something nice to put on your shelf. Bring back some nice memories. And these, this was made by uh, TPS Japan. So. Yeah, a Japanese company. They made a lot of different better wind up toys in the 80s and even into the 90s. Right, but once again, I mean, these type of toys, you know, if you are looking to collect um, collect them, uh, having the original box in this condition is a big selling point on these. So, just saying. Just saying. <laughs> that was lot 1016. Next, uh, we have... And of course, you know, Cyber Toys, we love our toys, or banks, and early cast iron. We do. So this one we don't get too often, it's fairly rare. This is the pump and bucket. 
and it's in great condition. It is in working order. And what you would do, I have to stand up to show you the front of this, but it actually will register your coins as you're putting them in there. So you would put it in the front and it's in a holding position right there. And I know you can't see that until you lift the pump and it falls in and then it records that. Um, once again, I know it's difficult to see. It is a cast iron mechanical bank. It also comes with, and this also is going to reflect for you, but those are the original operating instructions. Yeah, this is called a registering bank. Uh, no one really knows who made it. Really all the information comes from the registering bucket up here. And they did, you will find the still bank just of the bucket. Uh, this is the original handle to the bucket. Very often that's missing. They just replace it with a piece of coat wire. But uh, that is original, uh, very early, uh, again, probably uh, 1880s. And um, the, the key to it, you know, when banks, one of the things they wanted to do was instill thriftiness in children. So these were perfect because you couldn't really open it until you saved $5. So this will register up to $5, you keep putting dimes in. Once it gets to $5, there's a little nub on the top here. You press that with your finger and the lid will come off and you can get your $5 and go buy $5 back in the late 1800s. That would buy you something. So, you know, cool. it's a great example. I think it, you know, has a very nice folk art look to it. It does. It has great, and it has great detail too, even. It almost looks like there's the wood, planking. wood, yeah, the wood planking in the top and that nice red border along the bottom. Usually yeah. comes painted. You will also find it occasionally nickeled. And it is one, there is a variation that actually cast on top here, says Guskies. And Guskies was the hardware company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we are right now. Is that one more rare than this? The one? Guskies one is more rare. Yeah, because they only made it for that department store. But I think what makes this one so charming, I mean, not only could you, could you not <laughs> get your money out until you had five dollars which i think would be great back then but that it has part of the original instructions and you know the, and sort of that you say that the interesting thing about this and why a lot of the times you'll find them the base plate will be broken or the the bucket will come off because really that's the only way to get into the bank is you have to put five dollars in it and you know a lot of kids they don't have the patience they get up to like two dollars and twenty cents and they're like i want my money <laughs> That's pretty good. That's right. <laughs> I need to buy some skates. <laughs> All right. So that was lot 1004. And next we've got lot 1019. And this is just a great early boat. Um, and in addition to some nice banks, we do have a very nice selection of some early tin boats. Uh, like this one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a German um, Uber locker. was out of Nuremberg. And just really great detailing you know, from the, the 1870s, 1880s even. Yeah, and you can't really see, there's a little bit, I was saying earlier, a French flag there probably on the other side. Um, and there's actually, I believe, an artillery uh, garrison sort of in there, so they're firing. Um, there's a little, is there a little cannon in there? There are two cannons. Yeah, two cannons in there, so. There are two yeah. cannons. And I just think there's a lot of detail for um, the scale of this little boat. Well, and these boats, I think, are very unappreciated. They're, you know, they're very small, mm -hmm. diminutive, uh, but I'll tell you what, you put five or six of them on one shelf. That's true. They look better than any, like, 16, 18-inch boat. Uh, awesome. Again, the period really makes it nice. And, and, I mean, I won't say they're inexpensive, but they are very affordable. And here's so another that brings one here. our next one here. So, right here, <coughs> we have um, a Buckner. Um, with the original box. So Buckner was another um, uh, German manufacturer sort of in the Nuremberg region, or Württemberg is uh, the country really at that time. How cool that is. But yeah, they use nice stone litho. Look at that castle. I mean, the water looks real and the boat would come in it. And this one sort of has famous provenance. This came from uh, the Dick Claus collection. Uh, Richard Claus, he built you know, one of the finest boat collections in the world, which was sold maybe about six or seven years ago. Uh, and this actually came from it. It was actually pictured in the book, wasn't it? It was mm -hmm. pictured in the book on page 98. Let's see so you can see that put against Ray's shirt. You can see the little man. There you go. There <laughs> he is. <laughs> yeah. They're so great. And, so, and we have a couple of Bing boats in the sale. We have a very unusual French boat. Um, so, you, you know, if you, if you like any kind of boats, uh, take a look at the end of the sale. Uh, they all came in at the last moment and... Uh, you know, they sort of finish up the sale. Did we show this guy inside of here? I don't know if I did. I don't know. 
That's how it's actually pictured in Thick's book. See how needy looks in there? So whether you like uh, toys from the 1980s or 1880s and anything in between, that's what Cyber Toys is all about. So uh, there should be something for everyone in there, including we even have some beer paraphernalia. We do. Little Bud Man. Little Bud Man. You know, I went to at least two, if not three, Halloweens dressed as the Bud Man. I didn't think I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> See, doesn't that look like Ray? Isn't that interesting? Now, these are beer steins made in Brazil. Uh, this yes. is the first incarnation of the Bud Man. Uh, yes, and notice they, his nice rounded belly here. Yeah, you know, and he opens in the mouth. He opens at his mouth, so this one opens at his chin. So they changed it a little and bit. And this was what, 1975? Yes. So the the Bud Man was created in 1969, but they didn't actually start selling them officially in a catalog until 1975. And this one, we believe, is they would number them and give them letters and numbers. We believe he is CS1. Um, so there were a lot of different variations following that. This one is CS213, and now there have been over 400 of them. Oh. So but he is a very rare version. Uh, this one also is. He was from 1993. Um, and they're being sold together in one lot. Yes, they're in uh, one lot. Um, for all of you Budman collectors out there, because there are also other items that they sold in that catalog. There were salt and pepper shakers, there were shirts, there was neon signs, there was all kinds of things. Um, and kind of how they morphed him, obviously, <laughs> into more of like a, a superhero later on. But he is the defender of genuine quality. So they ended up putting that, you know, on his sleeve. And they do say... I just like how... The 1970s Bud Man kind of looks like a potato. Look at those massive arms. I mean, look at those massive arms he has. Whereas the 1990s, look at him. He really went to the gym. Look, he looks like a superhero. <laughs> I think Bud Man could take care of Superman anytime. <laughs> but they did release a special Bud Man and they circled back to the original guy for their 30th year in 1999. So they kind of backed away and they decided that he was more likable than the Superman. So if you want an original thing. Bud Man Stein, this is your chance. Very cool. Um, and that's, believe it or not, everything we had to show you today. Well, it was a nice assortment. I know, we had a nice variety there. And we also have a couple announcements for you. Um, our next Old Toy Soldier auction is going to be next weekend. It's October 11th, 12th, and 13th. That is going to be our 50th Toy Soldier auction. That's amazing. And it features the Bob Bailey collection, which um, we were lucky enough to sell um, the first part of it years ago. Do you Long remember? Time. What year, right? It was a long time ago. I want to say 2013 now. So. Yeah, so it's been a little bit, but um, so that's what our 50th auction features. We're really excited about that, and it's a, a great accomplishment for us, and we're looking forward to it. Um, the yeah, next, but this is what what cyber toy auction is this? It's number. This 11. is our 11th cyber our toy 11, auction. So we've had 11 cyber toy auctions too. I know. So we just keep clicking along. We do. Uh, the next RSL auction is going to be the weekend of November 8th and 9th. So it's Friday Saturday auction, and there's um, a lot of different items in there. Yeah, we have uh, the Carl Kittleberger collection of still banks. So some really nice still banks that haven't been on the market for 40 years. Uh, there's also some terrific mechanicals. It's all outstanding condition. We don't have a lot of mechanicals this time, but there, there are 10 or 15 truly outstanding examples. Then a nice selection of wind-up toys, penny toys. Uh, there's some boats in there. A uh, good selection of folk art. Yeah, so we are working on that catalog right now as we speak, and that will be going up online and in the mail shortly. And our next Old Toy Soldier magazine will be out um, the third or fourth week of November. And it is a special e issue, excuse me, featuring an index. And so we're um, excited and looking forward to that one. And uh, with that being said, I think... I worked up a thirst. Have you? Did uh, the Budman make you thirsty? The Budman made me thirsty, so I'm going to grab myself a Budweiser here. A Budweiser? Yeah. Who drinks well, Budweiser anymore? What do you mean? What are you drinking? <laughs> what the heck is that? Um, it's called White Claw. It's only the drink of the sun. White Claw? 
What mango flavor? There ain't no loss when you're drinking the claws. <laughs> but this bud's for you. <laughs> Good bidding this weekend, everyone. Enjoy. Cheers. Bye now.